Hi everyone and welcome back. So now I'm going to show you how to actually use the genetic algorithm with a real problem rather than just the max ones problem, the little toy problem that you're looking at. So for this we're going to use that all state data. So we're going to read that in first. So hopefully you've downloaded it from the website and put it in the working directory. So it's there and if you go over here now and look at it you can see the all state data and so a bunch of different things it has. And one particular one I want to talk about is this record type. So this record type talks about whether or not a customer just looked at a policy or actually purchased it. For this particular problem, we're only going to look at the actual purchases, which is the ones where record type equals one. So if you go back to the GA.R code, you'll see that we're going to create purchase P data or purchase data, which is a subset of the full data where the record type is equal to one, right? So now we're going to grab that. Um, or also then, so what does that look like? Well, if you look at it, right, it looks like the following, um, whoops, sorry, data set, right? Now that data set is still really large. If you look at it, it's 97,000 entries. And for the sake of just not making you sit here and wait while I run a bunch of models, I'm going to lower that data set. So I'm gonna grab one one thousand one one hundred sorry of that data so i'm going to take i'm going to say give me all the data from row one to one one hundredth of the size of that data so now if you look at p data it's only 970 entries so i'm only looking at a thousand entries and that's just so that the ga can run quickly um, but it would run long on the other one it's just going to take us 10 times as long and i'd rather show you how it works in real time so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to clean up that data. There's a lot of fields in here that just don't work well for trying to optimize over, right? So like shopping point and record type are all gonna be the same. We're not gonna care too much about um, day and time um, and the location. I care about the group size and homeowner. So we'll, we'll capture some of them, but I basically sub-selected a set of fields that I thought were relevant to the classification problem, right? And that's what we have here. So now we're gonna grab the first 70%. We're gonna do our split the training and testing like before, right? Um, so we can grab the training and test. Oh, I wanna clean the data. I think I forgot to actually clean the data. Hold on, I get back to that. So we'll run that clean data, then we'll generate training and testing as 10% of that data. So if you look at like the testing data, right? We're only talking about um, 292 entries, right? But we've got the data right there. Now you'll see that all those other fields have been eliminated. Okay. So now we need to do, well, now we need to create a couple of fitness functions, right? And so the first thing we're gonna create is, um, so it's kind of weird, but the way that the challenge, the way that the GA works, um, we need to pass only one argument to the fitness function. Um, so we're going to create one for the training argument and one for the testing argument. Um, and so it's going to just implicitly call the challenge, the fitness function we're going to use overall, but it's going to use the training data when we're exercising against the training function. And it's going to use the testing data when we're doing against the testing function. And then what does the actual challenge fitness function do? Well, it takes in a string and it looks at all the data and it's going to evaluate the genome against that data and then it's going to use that to predict and what problem are we actually predicting well we're predicting the level of one particular class of the data and that data let's see if i pull up the actual testing data to show it to you there we go so if you look we're going to look at what the current c coverage is so in that all state data there's different levels of coverage for different types of parts of the insurance, right? Um, and we're just going to focus on just predicting what the C level co coverage the person chooses is, right? So if you look back at the GA code, right, this value only goes between one and four. So if the GA predicts that the value is less than one, we'll say it's actually predicting one. And if it's greater than four, we'll predict that it actually is a four. And that's just a little trick we do to keep it kind of in the scope of what we're looking at. Um, and if the predicted value is equal to the observed value, then we count it as correct and we increment. And now the number, the fitness function is just the number of correct 
and we have divided by the number of total cases we have, and we're going to subtract that from one, right? So that's our fitness function. By the way, notice here I didn't put a return here, which is fine. I could put a return, but if you don't put a return in R, whatever the last thing evaluated is, is what gets returned. So how do we evaluate an actual genome? So now we have we're down to the level of a genome and a data point, and a data point is a particular set of data from the training case. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to first uh, remove any if it if it's not if it's not if it's an NA as opposed to a number, we're going to set it to a zero just because otherwise this doesn't work. And then we're just going to take each value of the genome, each gene in the genome, and multiply it times the value. And then we're going to add up all those results. So essentially, one way to think of this is we're doing kind of a, a regression on the data, right? We're basically coming up with betas to multiply times those actual values um, and put them in. And so then we're going to take that, we're going to put them all, add them all up, and that's going to be our result. Right? And, you know, as always, I like to kind of make sure this is working. So if we take one particular training data example, right, this 3 to 11, right, and we multiply all the results by 1, I got in the end that that equals 109. So let's look at that real quick and just show that to you. Let's see, pull up train, right? If we look at row 3, hold on, got to get back to the GA. If we look at row 3 and just the values of 2 through 11, which is the parts that we're most interested in, Row three, that's essentially saying that we're going to take one times one, one times zero, one times 11, so forth, all the way through these different numbers, 43, 43, right? And add them all up. And the result of multiplying all that in, and this again, this is just, this is not a real genome. This is just what I'm doing to test to make sure my genome code works. I said that that should be 109, and sure enough, that's what I get. Now we could also. And try and test a, a genome against all the fitness data. So in this case, I put 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 in for everything, which means that if you think about it, when you do the regression, it's just going to predict a 0 for everything. And then our code, that means it's going to predict a level of 1 for all the Cs because 0 is less than 1, so we set it equal to 1, right? So now I just wanted to ah, hit the wrong buttons again. I want to count up the number of 1s. And this number, 0 0.7054, should be the same as 1 minus the number of 1s. All right, so pull that up. And in fact, you'll see these two numbers are exactly the same, right? Uh, so that's not a very good fitness function, right? Because it's it means it's 70% wrong, right? But it is the answer. So now I'm going to... Um, run the GA. And to do that, I'm going to use the RBGA. I'm not using the binary one because I'm allowing real valued um, genes in the genome. And those genes are going to go between negative one and one, right? So we can have negative multiplications or positive. The population size is 10 uh, because this is a, a more complex genome. I'm just limiting it. We're going to iterate 10 times. The evaluation function is that challenge fitness function, training uh, function. Um, and uh, we're going to turn verbose on. So this is another way, you know, we did the monitor function before. This is another way to monitor what's going on in it. And so you'll see now when it runs, it says it's starting iteration one and calculating and then it's computing and it's applying mutation and crossover and what it calls elitism, which is the same as cloning, right, to copy over the results. So it's going to run for a little bit and then it's eventually going to come up with a best genome, right? Um, and we're going to see what that genome is. So it's all done. We're going to plot the results. And there you can see the graph over here. And the blue line is the mean evaluation value of all the genomes. And the black line is the best. And as you can see, um, it quickly seems to find a fairly good solution here. And we're going to find out which one of those is the best overall. And it is the... Um, the one that minimizes these results. Um, and we can look to see what that best genome is. And you know, it has a variety of weights. It seems to favor some of them negatively, some of them positively. Um, if you go and you look at the actual testing data, right, it's essentially saying that it's, 
it, the group size is a negative factor, but being the homeowner is a positive factor. And so um, it's helping in the car age is negative, car value is positive, right? Risk factor is negative, right? And so you can kind of use this to interpret what's going on. And so let's see what the actual results of this is. And so the best fitness function it can come up with um, for the training data is 0.66. So it's not great, right? It's still getting um, about 60% um, of them wrong, if I'm doing the math right in my head. And on the testing data, it's actually a little worse, right? Um, and so let's just do a generalized linear regression, see what it gets. And the generalized linear regression, right? So, you know, there's... Let me mention is it gets a little bit better result, right? Part of that's because I only ran for a few generations. I didn't run for a long time. And this in some respects, because essentially all we're doing is using the GA to do a linear regression, it's never going to get any better than this, right? But you could do something more fanciful with this. You could allow nonlinear interactions, right, to go on. You could allow, you know, different types of interactions to happen in the data, um, you could allow the variables to go beyond negative one at one, right? And so there's a bunch of things you could play around to improve this. There's ways that you can make this better than a linearized regression, right? Uh, but as of right now, it, it doesn't do any better. And I just want to kind of show you that a lot of times, you know, when we do all this great work, linear regression still does the best, uh, better than anything else.